tongue. The tongue is a mobile muscular organ located in the oral cavity, which bulges upwards from the floor of the mouth, and its dorsal part forms the anterior wall of the oral pharynx. It is basically a massive skeletal muscle covered by mucous membrane. The massive muscle is separated into right and left halves by a fibrous septum in the midline. Functions The tongue has the following functions taste, speech, mastigation, and declatation. Shape The tongue is conical in shape, being elongated posterior anteriorly and flattened dorsal ventrally. External features The tongue presents with the following external features a root, a tip, and a body. Root. The root of the tongue is attached to the mandible and the hyoid bone by muscles. These attachments prevent the tongue from being swallowed during deglutition. The nerve and vessels of the tongue enter through its root. Tip. It is the anterior free end of the tongue which touches the central incisors. Body. The part of the tongue between the root and tip is called the body. It presents with dorsal and ventral surfaces and right and left lateral margins. Dorsal surface. The dorsal surface is convex. It is divided by a V-shaped sulcus, the sulcus terminalis, into two parts. Ventral two-thirds or oral part and dorsal one-third or pharyngeal part. The apex of the sulcus terminalis is marked by a blind foramen, the foramen cecum indicates the point of origin of the median thyroid diverticulum or thyroglossal duct in embryonic life. The features differ greatly in the oral and pharyngeal parts. The oral part presents with the following features. A median furrow representing the bilateral origin of the tongue and a large number of papillae. The pharyngeal part presents with the following features. A large number of lymphoid follicles which together constitute the lingual tonsil. And a large number of mucous and serous glands. The oral and pharyngeal parts of the tongue differ in their embryological origin, as a mucosa of the oral two-thirds develops from the first and second pharyngeal arches, while that of the pharyngeal part develops from the third or fourth pharyngeal arches. Oral part. The dorsum of the oral part presents a shallow median groove. The mucous membrane is moist and pink and appears velvety due to the presence of numerous papillae. Lingual papillae. They are projections of the lamina propria of the mucous membrane covered by epithelium. There are mainly four types of papilla. Valate papillae. The valate papillae are the largest of the papillae with a diameter of 1 to 2 millimeters. They vary in number from 8 to 12. They are arranged in a V-shaped row in front of the sulcus terminalis. Each papilla is like a truncated cone surrounded by a circular sulcus, with a wall or velum on its periphery. The duct opens into the sulcus. The taste buds are found in the papilla and its velum. Finely formed papillae. These are the narrowest of the papillae and most numerous. These are small conical projections with sharp pointed tips. Filiform papillae are situated abundantly on the dorsum of the tongue and are responsible for its velvety appearance. Fungiform papillae. They have a red rounded head, about 1 mm in diameter, and are narrower at the base. They are situated mostly at the apex and margins of the tongue, while a few are spread over the dorsum of the tongue. They are visible as discrete pink pinheads. Foliate papillae. They consist of irregular vertical grooves and ridges near the margin in the front of the sulcus terminalis. Pharyngeal part. The dorsum of the pharyngeal part faces posteriorly and makes up the base of the tongue. The base of the tongue makes up the anterior wall of the oral pharynx. The mucous membrane on the dorsum of the pharyngeal part is devoid of papillae. It, however, appears uneven due to the presence of numerous lymphatic follicles in the underlying submucosa. These follicles are collectively known as the lingual tonsil. The mucous membrane in this part is continuous with the mucous membrane of the palatine tonsils and the pharynx. Posteriorly, it is reflected onto the front of the epiglottis as the median glossal epiglottic fold and onto the lateral wall of the pharynx as lateral glossal epiglottic folds. 
The space on each side of the median glossoepiglottic fold is known as the epiglottic vallecula. Ventral surface of the tongue. The inferior surface of the tongue is located only in the oral cavity. The mucous membrane here is thin, smooth, and purplish. It is reflected onto the floor of the mouth. It presents with the following features. Frenulum linguae, which is a median fold of mucous membrane connecting the tongue to the floor of the mouth. Deep lingual veins, which may be seen through the mucous membrane on either side of the frenulum linguae. The lingual nerve and artery are medial to the vein but aren't visible. Plica fimbriata is a fringed fold of mucous membrane lateral to the lingual vein. It is directed forwards and medially towards the tip of the tongue. Clinical correlation. Tongue tie. If the frenulum extends too far towards the tip of the tongue, it is called tongue tie. This inhibits normal movements of the tongue and may interfere with normal speech. It can be corrected by cutting the frenulum surgically. Muscles of the tongue. The musculature of the tongue consists of both extrinsic and intrinsic muscles. The intrinsic muscles are embedded in the tongue and have no attachment outside the tongue whereas extrinsic muscles take origin from structures outside the tongue and enter the tongue to be inserted into it. The intrinsic muscles change the shape of the tongue. The extrinsic muscles move the tongue, such as protrusion, retraction, and side-to-side -side movements, as well as alter its shape. The tongue is divided into symmetrical right and left halves by a medial fiber septum, which separates the muscles of both the sides. Each half of the tongue contains four intrinsic and four extrinsic muscles. They are as follows. Intrinsic muscles include superior longitudinal, inferior longitudinal, transverse, and vertical. Extrinsic muscles include genioglossus, hyoglossus, thyloglossus, and pallidoglossus. The intrinsic muscles are confined to the tongue and are not attached to the bone. They occupy the upper part of the tongue. The intrinsic muscles are arranged in several planes. They run in three directions, longitudinal, horizontal, and vertical. The intrinsic muscles are situated in the upper part of the tongue and are attached to the submucous fibrous layer and to the median fiber septum. The superior longitudinal muscle lies beneath the mucous membrane. It shortens the tongue and makes the dorsum part concave. The inferior longitudinal muscle lies close to the inferior surface, between the genioglossus and hyoglossus. It shortens the tongue and makes the dorsum convex. The transverse fibers extend from the median septum till the margin and make the tongue narrow and elongated. The vertical fibers lie at the border of the anterior part of the tongue and make the tongue broad and flattened. Extrinsic muscles. They attach the tongue to the mandible, the hyoid bone, the styloid process, and the palate on each side. Genioglossus. This is fan-shaped and takes origin from the superior genial tubercle. It is inserted into the entire substance of the tongue the fibers radiating from the tip till the base. The lowest fibers are inserted onto the hyoid bone. When acting together with its counterpart on the opposite side, it protrudes the tongue. Hyoglossus. This is a flat quadrilateral muscle and takes origin from the greater cornu, an adjacent part of the body of the hyoid bone. It is inserted into the side of the tongue. It depresses the sides of the tongue, making the dorsal surface convex. Styloglossus. This is a slip of muscle which originates from the tip of the styloid process and adjacent part of the stylohyoid ligament. It inserts into the side of the tongue along its entire length, interdigitating posteriorly with the fibers of the hyoglossus. The muscle draws the side of the tongue upwards and backwards. Palatoglossus. This is a slender slip of muscle which originates from the oral surface of the palatine aponeurosis of the palate. It inserts onto the side of the tongue at the junction of its oral and pharyngeal parts. It elevates the root of the tongue and approximates the palatoglossal arches. 
Movements of the tongue. Protrusion, which is the most important movement, is produced by the genioglossus muscles of both sides acting together. Retraction is produced by the styloglossus muscles of both sides acting together. Depression is produced by the hyoglossus muscles of both sides acting together. Elevation of the posterior one third is produced by the palatoglossus muscles of both the sides acting together. Changes in the shape are produced by the intrinsic muscles. Clinical correlation. Safety muscle of the tongue. The genioglossus is called the safety muscle of the tongue because two genioglossi form the bulk of the tongue and are responsible for the protrusion of the tongue. If these muscles are paralyzed, the tongue will fall back into the oropharynx and obstruct the air passage, causing choking and death. For this very reason, during anesthesia, the tongue is pulled forwards to clear the air passage. The genioglossi are commonly used for clinical testing of the hypoglossal nerve. The muscles of both sides acting together protrude the tongue, whereas a single muscle deviates the tongue to the opposite side. Therefore, when the patient is asked to protrude his tongue, the tongue deviates to the paralyzed side or the side of lesion of the hypoglossal nerve. Arterial supply. The tongue is supplied by the following arteries. Branches of the lingual artery, which is the chief artery of the tongue, the deep lingual arteries to the anterior part, and the dorsal lingual arteries to the posterior part. Tonsillar branch of the facial artery, and tonsillar branch of the ascending pharyngeal artery. Venous drainage. The tongue is drained by the following veins. Deep lingual vein. It is a principal vein of the tongue and is visible on the inferior surface of the tongue, near the median plane, through the thin mucous membrane. Venae comitantes accompanying the lingual artery. They are joined by the dorsal lingual veins. Venae comitantes accompanying the hypoglossal nerve. These veins unite at the posterior border of the hyoglossus to form the lingual vein, which drains into either the common facial vein or internal jugular vein. Lymphatic drainage. The lymphatics draining the tongue are grouped into the following four sets. Apical vessels. They drain the tip and inferior surface of the tongue. They drain into the submental lymph nodes after piercing the mylohyoid muscle. Their efferents drain into the submandibular nodes. Some even cross the hyoid bone to reach the jugulo-omohyoid nodes. Marginal vessels. These drain the marginal portions of the anterior two-thirds of the tongue unilaterally into the submandibular lymph nodes and then to the lower deep cervical lymph nodes, including jugular omohyoid nodes. Central vessels. They drain the central portion of the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. They pass vertically downwards in the midline of the tongue between the genioglossus muscles and then drain bilaterally into the deep cervical lymph nodes. Basal vessels. They drain the root of the tongue and posterior one-third of the tongue bilaterally. They drain into the upper deep cervical lymph nodes, including the jugulodigastric nodes. Nerve supply. The nerves supplying the tongue are as follows. Motor supply. All the muscles of the tongue, intrinsic and extrinsic, are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve, except the palatoglossus, which is supplied by the cranial root of the accessory nerve, via the pharyngeal plexus. Sensory supply. Anterior two-thirds of the tongue is supplied by the lingual nerve carrying general sensations and cordotympany nerve carrying special sensations for taste. Posterior one-third of the tongue is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve carrying both general and special sensations for taste. And the posterior most part or base of the tongue is supplied by the internal laryngeal branch of the superior laryngeal nerve carrying special sensations for taste.